One thing that was bugging me about this hatchback model was the rear axle. The floors of the early 80s production cars weren't flat, but this axle sitting in the breeze has just been there. Now it's going away, which will allow me to add some further floor modifications. This axle protruding down like this isn't the lowest part of the car, these chassis rails are. The problem is that it's perpendicular to the air and all the obvious negative effects are present because of that. Taken from the last model's results forming the base, these spikes and dips should just vanish. As you could probably imagine, both lift and drag are improved, and they did. The difference isn't dramatic, however there isn't any point changing the floor without this. So this is now out of the way and I can add skirts and then a flat floor with a diffuser, both for the wing and spoiler models. As a bonus, with the I should have just stopped here content, I added a fence to the forward edge of the splitter. But this just broke stuff and therefore provides an insight rather than improvements, which is good I guess. A great thing about this Suzuki GTI model is that it has basic skirts. These would actually provide a benefit, as air needs to round a much sharper corner to enter the floor from the side. Adding the undercut to the air dam above the splitter complements the effectiveness of these skirts. It does this by combining with the tire squirt and creating a rotating air mass along the side. It just happens that the height of the car and the amount of air forms a really nice seal to the floor. We'll come back to this later and as to why this works nicely with this case. Extending the skirts down gives a decent improvement in downforce, effectively for free. If you had to guess one modification given the front and rear split, choosing that the floor was sealed by the skirt would likely be your first guess, given that there's just an increase in efficiency, particularly from the rear. Before I get to the mechanism behind the improvements to the performance of the floor, because things get rather more complicated than I anticipated, I'll address the other models and results. Along with the skirts, a flat floor with a diffuser after the rear axle was run. This just made the downforce more efficient by removing 5% of the drag. A better diffuser likely would improve the downforce, but it's an interesting result that the exact downforce number was produced. There is a significant shift in balance to the rear, which would continue with a better diffuser. Its distribution peaked at 46.54 front to rear. This is something more suited to a rear wheel drive car, though it definitely wouldn't hurt here. To correlate these results, these modifications were run on the car with a spoiler. However, it isn't the exact same spoiler as the previous videos. Here it has a steeper angle. The same flow field, but slightly different numbers. Now to why and what is affecting the levels of downforce produced by this car, which has been mostly established as a product of the floor. So what is one of the mechanisms influencing the floor? One clue comes when I added the small fence on the splitter. The idea was to help spool up the already existing vortex rotating along the side of the floor. However, adding this fence on both of the models, there is a significant reduction in the downforce. More for the wing model than the other. Looking from below with the LIC and pressure map, the edge of the floors with the models with the fences have the lines sweeping inwards, meaning that the air is leaking underneath the car, or at least it isn't providing the seal as before. Here is the image of the vortex that provides this mechanism. It is more present at the side of the model with the spoiler. It gets a bit more complicated with the wing. Comparing the two, when there isn't a split offence, the difference is better illustrated with the wing. It also reflects a bigger difference in the numbers. Both the wing models have the same three rotating masses, but are reordered. The outer vortex is pulled in, lifting up the ceiling vortex. Seeing the way each is rotating corresponds to if there are ceiling vortex or not. And here we're not talking about a small amount, it's 6%. This characteristic plot along the center line captures the deterioration of downforce from the rotating air masses reordering, changing the seal properties. That is, the plots diverge approaching the rear with the split offense model having a higher static pressure. For those familiar with these graphs, you would see that there is more going on than I have mentioned. Adding a flat floor removes a large amount of lumps and bumps, like here, 2 meters in front of the rear axle. This is the air from the engine bay. Without the flat floor, it is contributing to the downforce with the balance shifting rearwards. It seems to be both direct and indirect, but generally complex. 
With the wing and the floor, there is a nice structure underneath the floor that is caused by the engine bay that isn't present elsewhere. Things are starting to get a bit complex around the front corners and suggest that this model is starting to reach its limits of usefulness. The vortex ceiling that can be created alongside is very effective, but fragile. Not having the simulated rotating mesh for the front wheels is a problem. However, illustrating the importance of this flow structure means that it would be something to look for when running aero improvements in the rear wheel.